Over the past three or so weeks now, old mate's been having trouble with his Zentil server. None of it is really attributable to Zentil, the operating system in itself. Moreover, it's been hardware trouble, bad hard drives, as well as this thing, this video. I'm going to explain what the hell's been going on. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Okay, so as I said, over the past three or so, nearly a month now, I guess you could say, I've been having some problems with my Zentil network server. And uh, none of it has really been attributable to the operating system in itself. In fact, Zentil has been probably one of the best server operating systems I've had and used. But as we know, I've had a lot of hardware problems, but also this thing has been causing me nothing but grief. Now we know what these are. I've got a heap of these, right? Um, these are out of my Sun servers. These are a Broadcom quad port gigabit ethernet card. Now, as you know, the original plan for this was to run a separate network off it for guest access. Now, I copped flack for not running guest off the ubiquity, but I actually wanted network separation completely. And uh, I was told I was an absolute halfwit for doing this and an idiot, which doesn't surprise me. So basically the idea behind this was to run a separate guest network coming off this with a couple of access points that I've got lying around, just cheapy Netgear access points. But the biggest problem I was having with this card was its inability to allow SSH access into Zentil. Meaning, if I had this, okay, if I had the LAN connected to any one of these four ports, okay, any one of them, I could not get SSH access, okay? Now, these cards aren't just for Sun Microsystems servers. These will work in any server that is PCIX, right? They're not a Spark-based NIC, essentially. They, are, they will run in anything. They are quad port, see, four port gigabit ethernet cards. But this card has clearly got some problems. And so the problem I was having was if I, like I said, if I ran the LAN off this, I could not get SSH access. So I came to the conclusion yesterday, and I said this in the Saturday promo yesterday, uh, the TGIF promo yesterday, I'm sorry, that I may end up having to take this card out of the picture completely and run with the onboard NICs. Now I did cop flack, like I said, for running the onboard NICs and this. Right? A few of the network purists suggested that I was an absolute halfwit and that I should be setting up a access point isolated virtual LAN system on a separate IP address coming off Ubiquity. I didn't want that. I wanted physical network separation. And there's nothing wrong with doing physical network separation. Sure, it adds a layer of complexity that probably you don't need these days. As we all know, the idea is now to make things less complicated, complex, by using smart access points and that to create virtual networks inside an existing network framework, for want of a better term. But I wanted physical separation. Now, the new age people out there, as I said, all ripped into me because how dare I do physical separation? I think one comment that I never published was I'm an absolute F wit because physical network separation is dumb. And one other comment was you, it is now illegal to do physical network separation. So there's a new one. Okay, so 
I deleted this card from the server, all right? Now, I've got three or four of these cards lying around. I can put another one in if I want. But this one was problematic. So let me just show you what I ended up having to do because the only way I could get SSH access into Zentiel was to come off the existing onboard NICs on the actual motherboard of the server. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna bring all this up again. And uh, do that. And then do this. Well, that's not well, I'm gonna try and do this on the fly. Oh, I've disappeared. <laughs> okay. So, here is the SSH access into Zentiel now, which I've now got coming off the onboard NICs. Now, the other problem I was having was with this card, MobRx term would turn around and go connection refused. Now, before you rip into me and say, oh, what about setting up the SSH from within SSHD config? didn't matter what I did. If I had LAN coming off this, it was rejected. Okay? Let me just make that a bit bigger. There we go. So, it didn't matter which one of these four ports I used, MobRxTerm would not allow SSH access through this card. Okay? So, you're now probably going to say, well, why don't you run the WAN on this and the LAN on the onboard. Ah, good point. This would drop packets. Again, didn't matter which port I used, it would drop packets, meaning I'd lose sync out, all right? Or I'd suffer a network stack. So, deleting this card and going straight with the existing onboard NICs meant it worked. Now, as you can see here, I've got this damn error coming up again. Um, now, I know how to fix it. I, we all know how to fix these issues with Ubuntu-based systems anyway, so I'm not going to even bother explaining them. Um, long story short, you delete the upgrade, it expires, and then re refreshes itself 24 hours later. All right, but we know that. You deal with Ubuntu server, you work with Ubuntu, you know this can happen sometimes with a changelog. Um, right, that's just... You know, we all know that. All right? I'm not going to go into all the details of it because we all know and understand that. So I've now got SSH access into Zentiel. The other big problem I was having too was in here. Now, you can see here I've got updates, which I've got to restart the server for. Um, but basically, I've now got this properly running. As you can see here, the antivirus, all that's running. Now... The other thing I want to explain was I got a lot of flack for running a domain from a lot of people. All right. Oh, why are you running a domain back out? You're halfway. In order to get file sharing going, Samba file sharing from this, I've got two options. I either set up a DC and enable file sharing, or I've got to bugger around with the file sharing settings without actually setting up uh, FQD and TLD. People were saying, you know, it's not authenticating. In actual fact, it was because I had the main PC here logged on as main PC with my username and password .byt.lan. That was the only way I could get to the Samba share. Now I can modify it a bit if I want. It's a bit of a bugger, but because people ripped into me because I'm running a domain when I shouldn't be, apparently it's illegal to run a domain at home, in order to get the Samba sharing going, I'm going to have to muck around with the file sharing once I install it to see if I can actually share the drive without actually activating a TLD. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I've got to work out whether I can actually buggerize around with it. So, to avoid flack, I'm not setting up a domain, but I'm going to have to, for want of a better term, hack the Samba system so I can get the two hard drives out in the server 
Now, all right, I can manually install Samba, right? I can. I can manually do an app get app install Samba, and then manually edit uh, the shares. But I don't have user access control to those shares coming off the Zentil server. I would have to manually mod the Samba share. So in order to shut everyone up, that is probably what I'm going to have to do. Um, even though I used Realm D and the main PC was logged on with, with a username and password to the domain, because I'd set a user up here at the domain. What I'll do in order to stop everyone giving me the grief of why bother running a domain, I'm going to, well, first off, what I'll try and do is install file sharing in DC and see if I can file share without enabling the DC. Um, if I can't, I'll then just app get install Samba and mod the ET, mod the conf file, the CONF file, which should make everyone happy. Apparently, you're not allowed to run a domain at home. Even when you do log on to the domain using a username and password as part of the domain, which was, you know, my username for this thing, um, at byt.land but apparently no 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 I'm not allowed to use a domain at home so I'm not going to use one um, so what I've got to do um, and I'll just show you here um, see what you got here is these domain controller and file sharing it comes as one package in 5.1 and 5.13 I couldn't activate file sharing unless I had the domain so what I've got to do, or what I think I'm going to have to do, is try and install this and see if I can activate the file sharing on the two hard drives I've got in the server, because I've added another hard drive now. I think I showed you that. Um, so I've added another hard drive. So I've got two in there. If I can actually set up file sharing without activating the domain, I'll do it that way. I'll set up the Samba shares that way. If I can't, because the DC and the file sharing are part of the one thing, I will then just app get in app get Samba and mod the CONF file and set the two drives up that way, which is, you know, we all know how to set up Samba. So I've got to work all that out first. So I won't set up a domain because people spat the dummy with me, even though they were authenticated on the domain using username and passwords. I'd even set a profile up here on the main PC. What I'm going to do is, and, and the media PC was logged on as well, media PC at byt.lan. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to set up file sharing without setting up the DC. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to screw around and hope to hell that Zentiel will allow me to mod the Samba settings if I just set up Samba. All right, I've got to figure that out at a later stage. So there we go. So I've got SSH. Um, as we know, we know these errors. So, you know, you work with Ubuntu servers, you know this sometimes happens. The fix is dead easy. I'm not going to, as I said, I'm not going to go into the fix. We know the fix. So there we are. So I've got it all set up now. Um, the other thing too is I fixed this damn antivirus issue too, which, as you know, I was having. Um, I've got the logs running, uh, the firewalls running. I'm not going to show you my firewall rules. Um, I've got a, obviously, um, do the, uh, software updates. I've got to restart the server at some stage, but there we go. So now that I've deleted this card out of the equation, it works. I've got a funny feeling this card may be a little bit buggered as well. Uh, which I'm going to have to sort out. But I've got plenty of these. I've got another four of these cards. So I can bung another one in if I have to. There's no problem with doing that. I can bung another one in. Um, and to those that wanted me to do um, what I believe is the proper and correct way of doing, which is use the ubiquity, uh, no. Because I want two separate isolated networks. Now, I know that's illegal, I know it's dumb, it's stupid, it's an idiotic everything, but I want the ubiquity just for us, okay? 
Now, yes, I know with the Ubiquiti you can set up a access point isolation system on a separate VLAN with its own DACP DNS, but it all still ends up going through the server, through my actual main network. What I want the second network to do is just to punch straight out. So, you obviously using Zentil's firewall. So there we go. Zentil update, server's running, which is really good. But as I said, the only way, there's really only a couple of ways I'm going to be able to do the Samba file sharing. Um, and in order to make everyone happy, I will try my best to avoid setting up a FQDN, so a domain. But I don't know whether I'm going to be able to run the Samba sharing without setting up the domain. I've got to figure that out. Anyway, stick around. If I can find what I'm looking for, there it is. Plenty more coming up. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.